Chapter 5 Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confided confidence in you through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? He then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth after the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I told you before, as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. I'd like to deal with verses 2 and then verses 16 to 26. Verse 2 surprises a lot of people here because it basically says that, well, I'll read it. It says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. And people have really no clue what Paul means. But you have to learn and remember what the symbolism was. Jews, people in the Middle East, highly symbolic in their conversation and in their images. Circumcision was a symbol, outwardly, of an inward change in the man and was a sign of a covenant that the individual had made with God. The problem was that for the Jews, as far as Paul, who was a Jew's Jew and Pharisee, as Pharisee was concerned, knowing how the Jews looked on the circumcision and how it in fact was a how in fact it was affecting their attitudes towards being Christian, those who had come sort of to Christ. He was telling the people that being circumcised was not part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And simply being circumcised, contrary to what many of the Jews thought, would get you no closer to Heavenly Father and not being circumcised. It availed you of nothing. It was simply something that happened. 
But it didn't make you a more spiritual individual. It didn't make you more loving or more kind or a better father or a better husband or a better neighbor or more generous or anything else. It didn't make you any of those things. And the problem was that the Jews measured their internal decisions about how righteous they were and what they deserved by how obedient they were to the dead law. And that's what Paul was telling them. The law killed. It was dead. And he didn't mean that they shouldn't worship God. He meant that the laws is hundreds and thousands thousands of minuscule observances of petty nothings, which is what Paul would basically describe them as, didn't get you any closer to Heavenly Father than absolutely doing nothing. Now, later chapters. He's talking about the natural man and the spiritual man. And I relate this to an experience in my life which was intensely moving to me. Uh, in November 2007, my 19-year-old son Mike died in a car accident. And I had to go to the hospital morgue to identify his body. And I remember having grief counselors and police officers. I think there were four police officers at one point in time and two grief counselors come and sit down and try to make sure that I was mentally as best possible uh, could be stable so that when I went down to the morgue I wouldn't become hysterical and and do whatever they were afraid I was going to do but I understood the gospel of Jesus Christ I understood why, where Mike came from I understood why he was here understood where he was going. Same for all of us. And one of the most powerful lessons I have ever received in my entire life came when I walked into the morgue and saw my six foot five inch son laid out um, covered from neck to toe uh, and I looked on his face. Face of a son I adored. So I, all of my children. Beyond any shadow of a doubt, I learned an incredible lesson that this chapter deals with, sort of. I knew the microsecond I looked at my son's body, that that was not my son. Yes, it was his body. But his body wasn't him. That there is a natural man and there is a spiritual man. And what I was looking at was no closer to being my son than his winter jacket was to being my son. It was something he put on when he came into this life and something he laid aside when he died. The body was not the young man. What makes us alive, what gives us life and personality and all the rest of it, it's the spirit that dwells within the body. It isn't the body. And that was the lesson Paul was trying to make sure these people understood.